I'm gonna shock the world here. I, I, you know, there's no way you disagree with this. Top John no. Leahy. Yes. You're gonna take a player spot away from a president? In my head, here's the box. I'm gonna bring back the box. But then What's there's again? another box inside of it. Oh, there's a smaller You're box. in there. They roll one for ten. Ten percent. How are you gonna do that? You can't win games like that. Bobcat breakdown. Bobcat breakdown. Bobcat breakdown. Bobcat breakdown starting right now. Welcome to another episode of Bobcat Breakdown. Joining alongside me are my two analysts, Clever Streich and Mike Singer. This past weekend, the men's ice hockey team kicked off their 2023-24 season on Saturday against the Boston College Eagles. In honor of the Bobcats winning the national championship last year, the team raised their championship banner prior to the game. On our way up to the game, Mike Clever and I discussed which men's ice hockey player deserves to have their jersey raised to the rafters. Now we're driving up to York Hill for the big game for the Bobcats as they will be raising a banner. Now guys, I have a question for you. Singer, whose name do you think should also be going up as another banner in the future? Uh, you know what? I gotta go with Devon Taves on this one. He was a uh, really good player for Quinnipiac and he's one of the first NHL players from Quinnipiac to go to the show. And you know what? On top of that, Clever, he even won a Stanley Cup. The first player to do so, he hoisted it up with the Colorado Avalanche after they beat the Tampa Bay Lightning. How can he not have the first player to win a Stanley Cup, join uh, the national championship banner and have his number retired? Mike, I think that's a pretty solid pick. Uh, I feel like you have to differ from me on this one, maybe? You're gonna pick the same thing. Do you have Here, to agree on this Here's one? the thing. Um, no team is complete a championship team without recognizing the leader, recognizing the guy that is the most valuable player that wears the C. I have to go with my first retired number as 23, Zach Metza. Okay. Wow. See, th this might be a bit of a hot take because obviously Zach Metza, he hasn't made the NHL yet. He hasn't cracked that roster. But the fact is, he was Quinnipiac. For these past five years, he has been through the ringer. He has been through the COVID era. He became the captain after Odin Tufto. He raised this championship banner all because of his efforts on the defensive end. He was all tournament team. He provided that first pass that got the jet started to win the overtime goal against Minnesota. He was all ECAC first team, best defensive defenseman. He was all American. He's one of only five or six Bobcats in program history that has had that honor. So I think that there is no one better. Just like the Rangers raising Mark Messier's number 11, we have to raise the captain, number 23, to the Raptors. You know what? That is a, a really good pick. I like how we were on the, the defensive side for this question with Taves and, and Zach Metza. It's going to be really interesting to see if they do start retiring numbers. Which one of those two definitely will, will go up first? I guess we'll... Uh, definitely have to see about that. Eli, we heard all the picks so far. We're just heading up York Hill right now. We're nearly to the arena. We got to hear yours. What's your pick if you were raising a number to the banner? Yeah, so as you said, we are going up this hill. We are getting near game time. We are about to head in to watch this big game. And my pick, you guys may not agree with it, but I got to go Yanni Peretz here. The star goalie for Quinnipiac in the last two seasons. He was their backstop. He kept the team alive in so many games. He is one of the main reasons why the team went undefeated on home ice. He is their, he was their star. He is such a phenomenal player. I know he's not in the NHL. Like Singer, you had said Devon Tate, he's in the NHL. I know you might disagree with me here, but he is going to make his name eventually in the NHL. If not, maybe a strong AHL goaltender, but I think he deserves his name up there in the Raptors. He, now we are about to park in the parking lot of the arena and we are gonna be heading into the game. Guys, are you excited to see who comes out on top in this game? You know what? I've been excited for this game for the entire season. I have it circled on my calendar and everything clever. How about you? Yeah, I mean, you're on the call, Mike, tonight. So it's gonna be phenomenal. BC's number six in the country. Quinnipiac number two, three. We'll see what happens, but we do know that national championship banner will be raised and the legacy of this team will forever be secured. Now guys, while not all schools retire athletes number, it definitely seems like there are a few players that will garner this honor from the university in the near future. 
Now with opening weekend behind them, what is the most important lesson that the team learned following the BC game and exhibition match against Northeastern? Mike, why don't you start us off? I, clever, I think one of the things that they learned is that teams are not gonna roll over them just because they won a national championship last week. I mean, if you look, including the game with Northeastern, they went 0-2, they didn't win a single game, mm -hmm. and I think on top of that, most important thing is they learned how to play without some of their best players. Sam Lipkin, Colin Graff, went 0 for 9 in the power play without them. They learned how to play together without those top players, and the most important thing, they learned how to lose, which is probably the most important. You gotta win, and you gotta lose every now and then. That's very true. They didn't have their top two players. They didn't have Graf or Lipkin. Those are their two leading scorers from last season. But I think what we learned most about this team is that it's going to take some time for the new core to mold. Just to throw some numbers out there, there are 14 returning players to this roster, 12 newcomers, and five of them are transfers that are grad transfers. So we're looking at 10 regular lineup players from the national championship team out of 20 that are left on the team. It's going to take some time for Rand Pecknold's system to work. I, I think that it's the ship of Theseus thought experiment that we could say here. Whether or not a ship that has all of its components replaced one by one remains the same ship. That question still has yet to be seen. They lost in overtime to a really good BC team, number six nationally, and then they got tied and then lost in a shootout to number 19 Northeastern. Two Hockey East schools that should be very good this year and might be tournament threats. But I think that there's just some time that we have to wait and see. So the biggest lesson is that they're just going to take some time to meld, figure out the system. All the new players still need to try and figure out the Rand Pecknold style. I'm not too concerned, but it's very obvious that there's a lot of replacement players that are going to need to come in and learn the system. I 100% agree. Uh, on top of that, I mean... 0 for 9 on the power play. I, I know I've said it once. I'm going to say it again. You just it, it just can't happen, which is why they lost that BC game. Uh, of course, the two players that I mentioned, they got knocked out of the game, Graf and Lipkin, of course. And they had learned how to play in an uncomfortable situation. I mean, BC really put them on the ropes. Quinnipiac came in at the very end to score. And ultimately, they played in a situation that isn't ideal. They lost by 9.5 seconds. I'm not too concerned, but it was just one of those situations where they didn't score enough, and they were shooting a lot, but it just wasn't substantive. Yeah, so as you guys said, we saw two top line forwards leave the game within the first seven minutes against BC. Colin Graff exited due to an injury, and Sam Lipkin was ejected from the game for slew footing. As a result of those two leaving the game, Rand Pecknell was forced to jumble his lineup. How important would you guys say are Graf and Lipkin for this team to be able to succeed and potentially repeat as national champions? Clever, let's start with you on this one. I think it's very clear as day when Rand Pecknold said that once Lipkin and Graf were out of this game, he was going to plan B, plan C, plan D, plan Z, which can't possibly fail. But you look at the numbers on the screen right there, 59 points for Colin Graf, Sam Lipkin with 43 points last season. These are your top two scorers. Of course they're critical. They're the protagonists of the power play. The offense is stifled without these two players in the lineup. The power play was 0 for 7 against Boston College. They only mounted one goal, and that was off of a good bounce. The third, fifth, sixth, and seventh leading scorers on the team in 22-23 have graduated for the Bobcats. So when you don't have your two top scorers on the team, obviously it's very tough. You know, these, these two players, they changed the face of the power play. In 2021-22, the power play was converting at a 14.4% clip. Do you know what it was like during the national championship season? 22.8%, and that's all because of Colin Graff and Sam Lipkin. And whether or not in the lineup, that's when things change and things go south. And going back to the last question, they played in that uncomfortable situation, going off what you said, because Colin Graff and Sam Lipkin, they're game changers. They are players that you want on your team. Uh, Colin Graff was tied for Division One in points last year. You're going up against college royalty, Minnesota, Michigan, and you got Colin Graff on your team. You take him out of the lineup, and there was a, in the building, a collective air was just taken out of the arena. It, everyone was in a, oh no, what's going to happen moment, and you saw them scrambling a lot without those players. Their power play looked extremely lost. Like you said, Rand Pecknold had to go through plan A to the plan Z, and Unfortunately, without those two players on your team, there isn't a lot of success 
with a bunch of new players on that team. And think back to the NCAA championship game. It was Colin Graff that scored the tying goal. It was Sam Lipkin that passed it to Jacob Quillen. Without Lipkin and Graff, Quillen's game is stifled because you don't have your line mates. You don't have your number one and your number two by your sides playing on the same line as you. And that's really going to cut off momentum in a game where you're facing a top 10 team like BC. They're very talented. Cutter Gauthier and Ryan Leonard and Will Smith, all top NHL prospects. Gabe Perot. I mean, they just had so much talent. And you, when you lose your top players, it's going to happen. They, they held on to go to overtime. But I, I don't think it's going to really say the true picture until we see some more game action and start ECAC play. Definitely going to have to see what happens moving forward. Well, we've covered quite a bit of men's hockey, but it's time for our first commercial break of the night. When we return, we'll take a look at some past takes made by Mike and Clever about the men's and women's ice hockey teams. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Drew, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. We're back on Bobcat Breakdown. Two years ago, Mike and Clever debated in this exact studio about some men's and women's ice hockey players and whether their stock would rise or fall heading into the coming seasons. Let's roll a clip and see how those takes played out. I am so excited for this segment. Despite him being a great defensive player, I think he can contribute a little bit more offensively. Many, many days later. But the problem really is, is that she's been kind of cold recently. She's been kind of cold recently. A few months later. But as a leader, you're gonna look to those leaders in a game like St. Lawrence, when you're only down to one to score, they're looking for her to be a leader. You can't really blame Schroeder in the end for a loss. You're looking for your talent to score, and I think that's why Schroeder is not the reason why this team has been doing bad. I think it's, in fact, one of the reasons why I picked uh, Sadie Peart for the decrease in play. Now, for the viewers at home, you obviously couldn't see the reaction from these guys, but it was absolutely priceless. Guys, what do you have to say? 
I don't know what sophomore year me was thinking with <laughs> Jaden Lee and Kareem Schroeder. Those those are some takes. But I have to defend myself. Jaden Lee had two assists in 16 games at that point, and Kareem Schroeder was being benched for Logan Andres. I couldn't know that they were going to come back and turn into the players that they were. I could see where you're going. Um, in the game that I was talking about, I don't think Sadie Pierce showed up for that game. Uh, she must have hurt me because then, uh, what did she's she literally the she's... leading scorer of the team this year, Mike. I don't know, I know. what you were thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. Either. Sadie Pierce of all people. But I think on that, it's the last time. We're all going right, to all right. So now that we've looked back at the takes, we have to see who from each team you think their their points should be. So. Clever, why don't you start us off with your men's ice hockey team? Yeah, let's talk about the current stock report. So the men's ice hockey team stock up. This is a very easy answer for me. It is Mason Marcellus. He scored the only goal for the Bobcats of the season so far in regular season. Like Jim Ross said when Jeff Hardy faced The Undertaker in the ladder match, climb the ladder, kid, make yourself famous. This guy went out there and he took the initiative. He scored a goal to tie the game with two minutes left. That was huge. He has been playing tremendously well. He was the captain of the Lincoln Stars last season, had 68 points in 58 games, 12 points in nine playoff games. Leaders step up, captains step up in moments like that, and that was a leadership moment for that first year right there. You're gonna talk about leadership, you're gonna talk about stepping up. The player that stock is rising is the captain, Jaden Lee. Now, I don't know if you have something against Jaden Lee. He was your stock down last time. You're looking at your screen right now. He is the captain. He's the 50th captain in this program. He got the captaincy from Zach Metza, Wyatt Bon Giovanni, two great captains that have gone down in history for Quinnipiac. You're still looking at that screen. He recorded six blocked shots this weekend. One of those shots from the broadcast section, I thought they were, I thought he broke his ankle. It looked like a monstrous block. He went down the tunnel, and then what happened? The very next shift, he was out on the ice. He was making defensive plays. He was out there for overtime. I don't know how Jane Lee isn't your stock up. Yeah, well, I, I respect the initiative of the captain to stay in the game. I respect the tenacity, the intestinal fortitude. But when you have a guy who has come into the Bobcats, kind of an unknown in Hamden, and then get that ovation, get the people going in that crowded of an M&T Bank arena, Mason Marcellus has all you're, the momentum you're in the it, world right now. How does away. Mason Marcellus not have all the momentum after having that goal You're taking BC? it away from Jaden Lee. How the am I captain? taking anything away you from Jaden Lee? talking about leader Lee. There's no the... one better than the leader. Yeah, that's great. Jaden Lee's the captain. Phenomenal. But Mason Marcellus deserves to be in the stock up category. He had the only goal for the Bobcats so far this season in regulation play. They all played right, one. All righty, all all righty. Honestly, I, I got to agree with Clever here. Now, let's hear your women's take for stock up. What do you guys so, got? So, for stock up for women, as a goalie myself, a little bias here. How can you not go with Logan mm. Ongers? She is she's the rock star on this team right now. You look at your screen, four wins. That's in four games. She hasn't lost once. She's only allowed one goal per game. A beautiful 959 save percentage, not even one goal against average. A .99 goals against average. She's the rock star. Her stock is through the roof right now. Oh, obvious answer. Let's go with Logan Andres. Look, well, Logan Andres is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Kendall Cooper. Kendall Cooper's off to the best offensive pace that she has been in her entire career so far. She has five points in four games. And five of you count an assist against UConn, she would have six. She is a leader through and through. You talk about leadership, she's got that A in her chest for a reason. Two-time All-ECAC second team, she is going to have a 30-point season. That's Clever's claim. I just made something up. Clever's claim is that Kendall Cooper breaks her all-time single-season point record. 30-point year. She has been incredible so far for the Bobcats. She has played her game so tremendously well. She's in elite form right now. I think Clever's claim is actually Clever being wrong. You look at mid, the last How four. How is she wrong? She's literally second in the, the team. The last four She's leading the defensive core. Are you going to let me finish? You're gonna, you're not gonna yeah, let I'll let you finish. finish. Go right ahead. The last right four ahead. games, again, or the last four games for Quinnipiac, 3 nothing win, 5-1 win, 3-2 overtime win, 4-1 win. Yeah, Logan really Andres phenomenal. All right, all right. Logan Andres is always right the rock star. Oh That's not a wired God. take that okay, she's okay, gotten okay. the up, up category. She's been the starter for six years. From the hockey guy here, I gotta go Logan Andres. I mean, come on, dude, she's four and oh. She's only true. let up one goal in each true. game. That is fantastic stats. 
All right, so now let's look at whose stock may have fallen this offseason, starting with Clever and the men's ice hockey team. Sam Take it away. Lincoln. I, I have to say the penalty that he took in the first game, if you're talking about just one game, the sample size is so small. It was so hard to, to determine someone for this, but it's frustrating to see he took the game misconduct and then the next game, he took a minor penalty again. Like, I have full confidence that Sam Lipkin is going to be phenomenal this year. He was second on the team in points like we've been talking about all night long. But i got to put Lipkin in the trending down category for the moment. He's played only five games. Yeah. I know music all gets longer than five minutes. All these players have only played five games. The true stock down is Jacob Quillen. He, when he was out there all He didn't have his line mates. Both of them That's were gone why from his the stock game. Is down. Just because your two line mates are gone are doesn't mean about? you're wandering around the ice looking around like, where is everyone on my team? Well, it was fine during the BC Lipkin game. Lipkin played five minutes. You can't have his stock down just because he played five minutes. He got ejected. All right, so what? That's only five minutes. Why are we? Why do we have concern at all about the York Hill boys line? They should be fine once they get against the AIC. I, 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 I guess we'll have to see. I... I'm we'll just so sing. baffled by that, by that pick. All right, so now let's hear the women's stock down. Singer, take it away. Uh, to me, it's obvious. Kate Villeneuve, I mean, she's in her senior season. She's played 51 games with the team and has one goal. No points. Her last goal was January 7th, 2021. Her stock is all the way down. Mike, she's like, she's a role player. Like, like, let's get that straight. Villeneuve does a very good job of playing for role in the fourth line. It, they have goal scoring. They're winning. I would say the biggest concern that I have, if I'm nitpicking, nitpicking here because they've been so flawless, is that Lucy Phillips and the backup goaltending situation has not been resolved on this team. Neither Tatum Black or Lucy Phillips has played yeah. a minute yet in regulation, and we still don't really have an answer on who's going to be behind Logan Andres. Let's say that Logan Andres can't start a game. Who are you going to? We don't know yet. There has to be a time in the next few games where you could get one of them a look because they're playing Providence. Providence is ranked. They're playing Brown, Yale, wait, Clarkson, wait, wait, St. Wait, wait, Lawrence. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, they on. have a big ECAC slate coming up, and we haven't seen either Phillips or Tatum Blacker play. But why would you take them out if Logan Andres is the rock star? Of course she Logan Andres is, is phenomenal, but you have wall. to build as well for the future, and these non-conference games don't affect ECAC play. You have at to take one, a risk at some point. At one point last year, with your horrendous take of Kareen Schroeder, Bla uh, excuse me, Logan Andres took a back seat to Schroeder. What happened this season? She's in the driver's seat now. Well, that's because you had a goalie room of Kareen Schroeder and Logan Andres and Katie Boudiette at that point in time. Yeah. It was not, you know, with Tatum Blacker and Lucy Phillips who are, who are kind of, you know, just figuring out their game. So yeah. I, I think we'll get an answer soon, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's time to head into our final break of the night. But the show's far from over as we have our final roars plus a highlight from this past weekend presented by QBSN. We'll be right back. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I play JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it all, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed. And for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. 
He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Thanks for sticking with us. After a thrilling weekend for the men's ice hockey team, QBSN put together a montage of some of the best moments. Let's take a look. Now, I think we're having a little technical difficulty, yeah. but to, to go back to that debate that we were having a second ago sure. about Jacob Cullen and Sam Lipkin, I want to ask you this. How many points do you think each of those three guys on that York Hill boys line is going to have this year? Because I think that Colin Graff's going to come pretty close, but he can ellipse that 59-point mark. Uh, you know what? I, I think all three of them collectively will put up at least 40 points or more. They're on that powerful top line. I mean, Matt Mugno penned it perfectly. They are the York Hill boys. I mean, now they aren't on York Hill anymore, but they're still dominating they on, on campus. York Hill. <laughs> But as great as that debate was, we were even having the debate in the commercial break. We I want to go back to those stock break. down players. I, I can, in fact, confirm this for those of you at home. They were arguing during commercial I break. They were arguing during the commercial break. That's how heated this was. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I don't understand. How can you pick? Uh, what, what don't you understand? How can you Explain to me what you don't understand. I will if you're going to let me finish. Sure. I, you're picking two backup goalies when the goalie situation is I said I was nitpicking. All. I was nitpicking a team. Nitpick need to something find else out. because I was no finding out the who the backup goalie of the team has to be. All right, all right. Oh my so now gosh. it's come time for myself and the guys to shine a light on a few topics that we're passionate about with our final roars. Clever, take it away. A culture goes beyond the product that you put on the field. Now, a culture goes beyond the product that you put on the field. It's how you connect with the team in the locker room and the people in the stands. We've covered every angle of Nina Klein's first year as the Bobcats field hockey head coach from the perspective of the team's performance. But how has Klein cultivated a community? The answer is a light blue t-shirt. It all began on a preseason Zoom call where Klein shared that she wanted to pull a page from her Boston College coaching playbook. Only given to the most exuberant and passionate friends of the program, BC head coach Kelly Dutton introduced Eagles super fan shirts. If fans wore these bright shirts, players could look up in the stands and know that they were being supported. Thus, when Klein returned to Hamden, the light blue Bobcat super fan shirt was born. And what better way to celebrate Bobcat weekend where the Bobcats shut out the main Black Bears than to invite former student athletes to come out to the 50 yard line at halftime wearing their super fan shirts with pride. Now at face value, a t-shirt is just that, a cloth screen, screen printed piece of merchandise, but it sends a message indicative of Klein's culture. It's bold and different, but confident and united. It's a celebration of all things Bobcats field hockey, past, present, and future. Klein told the media Sunday that someday she hopes to see the house that Becca Main built, the Quinnipiac Field Hockey Stadium, completely filled with a sea of York Hill blue. A drove of Bobcats super fans cheering on the squad as they venture deeper into the Nina Klein era. A ring. What does that symbolize? Marriage? Devotion to someone? A promise? Well, to the men's ice hockey team, it symbolizes a brotherhood that banded together to do what no other team in program history has done. Last week on October 2nd, the team was able to finally get their hands, or fingers if you will, on the rings. Those rings lay the last piece of the puzzle into place for the program's first championship and finally cement their legacy. As the fall gives away to another hockey season, it's time for these group of players to defend the fort, to defend the bank, to defend their precious national championship. With returning stars like Sam Lipkin, Colin Graff, and Jaden Lee, they can help bring their team to Minnesota and return to the Frozen Four as they hunt for their second straight national championship. But what's one lone championship without a second one to keep it company? Most importantly, a second ring to put on the other finger. Quinnipiac has what it takes to return to the Frozen Four and make it two for two. A goaltender in any sport often is put under the shining spotlight as the fault or success of a team's performance. For the past two seasons for the men's ice hockey team, Yanni Peretz has been under that spotlight for positive reasons. 
In his first two seasons at Quinnipiac, he ended with an astounding record of 56, 9, and 5. He posted a goals against average of 1.34 and had a save percentage of 0 0.935. Both were record setting, etching, etching his name at number one in the record book as a Bobcat in goaltending statistics. He was a major reason why the team was able to maintain such dominance last year and secure themselves their first national championship. Now flipping the page to the 2023-24 season, Vinny Duplessis has massive skates to fill. The senior transfer from Boston University has stepped away into the blue crease for the Bobcats taking what seems to be the starting spot. In his first game for the Bobcats, he proved he has what it takes making 21 saves and keeping the team in the game when they needed him most, including two major breakaway saves. If Duplessis can perform to at least half of what Peretz was able to accomplish, this Bobcats team can do the unthinkable and potentially go back to back. That's all the time we have for tonight's show. Make sure to follow us on social media at Q30 Sports and stay connected online at Q30TV.com. From our producers and everyone behind the scenes that make this show possible, this has been Mike Singer and Clever Streich and myself, Eli Ehlers. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great night.